<laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, it's good to be here, and uh, what an honor to be able to minister this morning here at the cathedral. And uh, I've been ministering in this church for 31 years. That's a long time, isn't it, Donna? Donna was here when we first started ministering in uh, 1986. I don't think Gene Gentry's changed a bit since 31 years. If you've not met my wife, Gene, why don't you stand just in case somebody hasn't met you? This is Mrs. America. So uh, we met Bill and Sue Hart. 1986, and they said, would you come and minister for us in Austin? It was not in this building, but uh, immediately we felt a strong connection. I believe in divine appointments, divine connections, and I believe in relationships. Relationships are spelled T-I-M-E time. So we have, uh, we built a wonderful relationship with Bill and Sue Hart. It's an honor to have them as our pastors here in Austin, they, they're a wonderful couple. And, uh, you know, when you have led a church for over 35 years, you're in about the, the top two percentile as far as longevity in America in pastoring. The average uh, pastor in America stays 2.5 years. 2.5 years. And now Bill and Sue Hart have been here 30 about 35 years, I guess. So uh, a great couple and stalwarts, and, and we're so delighted to be in relationship with them, relationship with this church. And uh, here on this July 4th weekend, I want to salute all of the veterans. Do we have any veterans in this church who are here today? Do we have any vets? Y'all stand. All the vets stand, if you will. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you for serving our nation. Thank you for help, helping keep us free and safe. And uh, I'm so very, very thankful and grateful um, to you. God bless you, and we honor you today. Okay, I want you to turn to the book of uh, Isaiah, if you will. The book of Isaiah. I brought my notes with me today. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to preach a little while, and then we're going to pray a little while. I love to preach and pray. And if the Lord gives me a prophetic word, I'll prophesy. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning with verse number 28, page 633 in your King James Bible. You got that? Do you know that one word from God can change your life forever? Why don't you just put your hand on your ears and say, Holy Spirit, open my spiritual ears that I may hear your voice saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Put your hand on your eyes and say, Holy Spirit, open my spiritual eyes that I might see what you're doing in me. Put your hand on your heart to say, Holy Spirit, open my heart today that I might receive all that you have for me. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready. Are you really ready? Father, we just pray you'll anoint the word. Come, Holy Spirit, touch my lips that I may speak whatever you want me to speak. You uh, show me the way and I'll follow. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning with verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? God is not tired. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint 
and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I like the Message Bible, what it says. It says, why would you ever complain, O Jacob, or whine, Israel, saying, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out, doesn't pause to catch his breath. And he knows everything. He knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall, but those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. God knows us, sees us, and is directing our steps. His timing is not our timing. Our time is not his time, and his time is not our time. And sometimes we feel we have come to the end of our strength. We feel we have come to the end of our rope, our road, and we're tired. And you know when you get tired, you make some wrong decisions. When you get weary, you make wrong choices. That's why it's very, very important to allow the Holy Spirit to renew our strength. And I, I just, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say today, there are some people here today that you become very tired, you become very weary, you're ready to maybe throw in the towel, make an unnecessary change, Make a shift that may not be profitable because you're tired. You know, Gene and I, uh, one of the most profitable years of our ministry was in 1994. But we almost missed one of the greatest seasons of our lives because we got tired. Uh, we were scheduled to... Uh, lead a three-week revival. That seems kind of long, it doesn't. So lead a three-week revival at Calvary Cathedral in Fort Worth, Texas. But we had just uh, completed 11 weeks of meetings, two services a day, morning and evening, in uh, uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, on several occasions, uh, I almost called Pastor Bob Nichols in Fort Worth and said, I can't come. I'm just too tired. Sometimes when you get tired, that can be physically or emotionally or mentally, you just get tired. And it, some people call it burnout. And you just feel like, hey, I got to make a change. I got to do something different. I got to quit. I got to stop. I got to, you got all sorts of things can run through that mind of yours. So Gene and I almost did not go to Fort Worth. In fact, we were offered an all-expense-paid trip before we, before that April start to Israel. Everything paid. We just said we can't do it. Can't do it. We're just too tired. We started leading long-term revivals in 1990. We went to a church in South Texas for uh, three days and stayed 11 weeks, and then it just started. So we had gone from, from uh, June of 1990 to April of 1994, almost nonstop, and we just got tired. Did you ever get tired? You just, you just got tired. You said, I just, I need to do something different. I need to make a change. I need to make a switch. I need to lay down. I need to rest. I need to take a vacation. I need to change jobs. I need to uh, move to another location. 
all sorts of, of uh, choices kind of runs through our minds. But you must understand that God is directing our steps, step by step. And it is very difficult to miss the will of God. I've heard people say, well, it's so easy to miss the will of God. No, it's very difficult because God will throw barriers up. He will throw roadblocks. He will do what is necessary to, to warn you or talk to you or, or uh, you'll just feel miserable about certain situations or what have you. I just sense today as I get up and start reading this passage of Scripture that there are people that really need direction for your life. You really need to know the will of God and you don't need to make wrong choices or wrong decisions. So we about opted out of the greatest meeting that we had ever done in our 50 years. And on two or three occasions, I, I started to say, Pastor, I can't come. I'm just too tired. But the Holy Spirit kept nudging us. And so the second week of April of 1994, we went to Fort Worth and... Uh, started uh, a prayer revival, prayer and preaching and prophetic. We had two services a day. And we went for five weeks before anything happened. Because I, Gene and I received a word in 1990, you're going to start going into churches and you're going to pray, Have a, you're going to stay until there's a breakthrough. You'll pray through until there is a breakthrough. And after there's a breakthrough, through, there'll be a breakout. David said, I'm going to run through a troop. That's a breakthrough. That can be very tiresome. Then he said, I'm going to leap over a wall. That's a breakout. When you get over the wall, you go to places you've never been, do things you've never done, say things you never said, meet people you never met, operate in gifts you never operated in, travel to nations you've never been to, preach sermons you've never preached, give prophetic words you've never given, have dreams you've never dreamed, and so forth and so on. And so the Lord said, you're going to stay in the church until you get it. You're going to go to churches and you're going to stay until there's a breakthrough. Now, we had not heard that word. We had not been that way before. But sometimes God leads you in a way that you've never been before. You do things you've never done before. You take risk that you've never taken before. So when you get a word from God, you cannot receive it with your mind because your mind does not have the capability or the capacity to receive a word from God. You have to receive it with your spirit. Your mind cannot comprehend it. Your mind may reject it. Your mind may say, not so, no way, Jose. But your spirit says yes and amen. And you write it down. And you've got to realize that oh, when you receive a prophecy, it's not a chapter or a book. It's a word. Is there any word from the Lord? And it may be only one sentence or two sentences or a paragraph. I don't know. But we just got that word. We received it by faith and we wrote it down. We're going to go to churches and we're going to stay and we're going to pray through until we have a breakthrough. One pastor said, when I told him uh, my prophecy, he said, well, you're not coming to my church and stay that long. I did stay 11 weeks. But he said, no, you, you can't do that because you can't receive that. I mean, how can you do that? I mean, because Gene and I, for five years, have been traveling doing two three-day uh, uh, meetings a week for five years, three days, one day off, three days, one day off, and that had gone on for five years. But God broke our rhythm. He broke through and brought an expansion into our lives. God wants to expand you. Promotion does not come from the east or the west or the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. He sets one down, stands another one up. So by faith, we proceeded on. Sometimes you get weary. Sometimes you're ready to throw in the towel. But there are times you need to rest, and there's times you need to proceed. Because somebody is waiting on the other side of your obedience. So we went to Fort Worth, and we were going to stay for a few days. We ended up 
pastor kept saying, no, you got to stay a little bit longer, stay a little bit longer. And at the end of the fifth week, we had an incredible breakthrough, which was followed by a breakout. A woman came to me and, uh, before I got up to minister that evening, and she said to me, uh, my husband left me 19 months ago for another woman, said he came back this week, repented, said he wanted our marriage to work, and uh, God has just been working these past five weeks. And I, I, I congratulated her, rejoiced with her, and as she walked away, I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, how many love the voice of the Lord? Well, the voice of the Lord is powerful, and he can speak to you at the most inopportune time or the most unusual time or strange time or the less spiritual time that you're in. He can just speak to you. And the Lord said, you've had your breakthrough. Revival begins tonight. That, that uh, next morning at the service of man that had not walked for 11 years got up and began to walk. He began to run around that 2,000-seat auditorium, and it just broke out. It just broke out. A woman that had a, a, a major tumor in her body just disappeared. The next morning when she came, she was completely healed. There was a, there was a, 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 a person that was, uh, had a difficult time seeing, and, and we prayed for her. And uh, the next morning when she got up and put her glasses on, she could not hardly see anything. She said, oh, my God, they prayed for me last night, and I'm going blind. And uh, she took her glasses off. She could see perfectly. <laughs> and things began to happen. And it went on for 24 weeks. Jean and I, Jean was only home that, that year, 1994, for six weeks in her home. And uh, for 24 weeks, we were there. And day and night, the glory of God was coming. There was a season when people would, that were so overpowered with the Holy Ghost that they had to walk, crawl in the building, crawl out of the building. I know that sounds a little weird to some of you people. And I thought it was too. There were nights when I was so overwhelmed with the Holy Ghost that two men would stand beside me just to hold me up so that I could minister the Word of God. People were saved and healed. I wrote a book called Revival of the Morning, just all the things that took place. But I almost missed it because I became weary in my soul. I became very tired. And I just sensed this morning, I got lots of notes that I could go over. I just sensed this morning there's some people really tired in your physical body, weary in your soul your mind, will, and emotions. And when we get tired and when we get weary, we can make some terrible choices. We can go the wrong direction if we're not hearing God. So I'm going to pray right now. Corite et amarose ibrite. Imarundi nabrokisi briki talamando urote ibrishikuturi ite, which is a special prayer for those of you that have become tired. Some of you are tired of life. Some of you are tired of your job. Some of you are tired of your business. Some of you are tired with your schedule. Some of you are just flat tired. Some of you are desperate for a change. It could be right and it could be wrong. If you're tired, you can make wrong decisions. I pray for you right now. I ask the Holy Ghost just to come and minister to you. Cora mendei, ibri shikota labro ute, erebre isoto, ibrende labro como, labro shikota rebriete. Help me a little bit, Eric. Give me some, give me some music. Give me some. I love, I love for Eric to work with me. And I, this is not the way that I thought we was going to go today, but I'm just following the leadership of the Holy Ghost. 
I'm praying right now, and I want some of you to receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Would you do that? Hallelujah. Just receive. Just receive. Some of you are tired of life. Some of you are tired of your job. I pray for you right now. Some of you are tired in your marriage. Some of you are tired of the way your kids are acting. Some of you are tired because you've not met a godly husband or a godly wife. Some of you are tired because life has done you in and things that you never suspected would happen to you has happened. You become weary. You quit dreaming. When you quit dreaming, you, quit, you start dying. The day that you stop dreaming is the day that you start dying. I heard about a man that, that died when he was 40 and they buried him when he was 60. Some people are just walking dead men, walking dead women. Because you quit dreaming. Some of you are in a place of containment. You're, you're tired because you've been contained. You've been restricted. You don't have any room to move about. Numbers 9.20 says, You gave them your good spirit to teach them to live wisely. You never stood with your manna. Gave them plenty of water to drink. You supported them 40 years in that desert. They had everything they needed. Their clothes didn't wear out and their feet never blistered. You gave them kingdoms and peoples, establishing generous, generous boundaries. Some of you need your borders enlarged. You're weary because you're restricted. You're contained. Self-contained contained by other people. I pray for you right now. Kiroshiki rute. Kibrishikete ita urubu ute. Te sharabukuta. Micah 2.13. God said, I'm going to burst all your confinements. I'm going to lead you out into the open. Sometimes we become weary because we're confined incarcerated, cramped, constricted, restricted, limited, narrow living, small living, tight living, uncomfortable, inadequate, trapped, impounded, shut in, locked in, locked up, cooped up, fenced in, hedged in, walled in. Anybody feel like that today? Trapped in a marriage you don't want to be in. Trapped in a job that you hate. But you feel like that you can't find a better job. You got a business that you've started but it's not succeeding. It's not prospering. You carry the weight on your shoulders when you go to bed at night. When you get up in the morning. Almost 3 million people are incarcerated in America. They're in prison. There's a lot of people walking around. They're in prison also. Shut in, locked in. Weary, tired. Weary and tired. But what did he say? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. He understands is under, unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, to those who have no might. He increases strength. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the universe is not faint, is not fainting, and he is not weary. We're talking about 
our God, our Father. Hallelujah. Would you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you today? Huh? Why don't you just take a deep breath and just breathe them in. Let the Holy Ghost minister to you. This might be a good time to communicate with God, to communicate with the Holy Ghost, to say, Lord, I'm, I'm tired of my job. I'm tired of my business. I'm tired of not making a profit. I'm tired of dealing with these employees. I'm tired of school. I'm tired of going to college. I'm tired of my marriage. I'm tired going to church. I'm tired. I'm tired praying the same old prayers all the time. I'm tired of nothing seemingly happening in my life. Sometimes I wonder if there really is a God and if he really does answer prayer because he hasn't seemed to be talking to me lately. Where are you at, Lord? Have you gone on a vacation? Have you taken a rest? God... There's some people in this room today that need you. And I pray for them. I ask the Lord that you touch them. I ask Holy Spirit that you minister to them. Ask God that you renew their strength today so that they can run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Kiroshikete. Kiroshikoturiotai. I just hear the Lord saying, I'm bursting all those confinements. I'm bursting all those restrictions. I'm giving you room to move about. Life is not over. It may not be a period. It may just be a comma. It may just be a short pause. Because you could be on, on the verge of the greatest season of your life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. At the times we least suspect, here comes Jesus, walking on the waters, getting into your boat, saying these words, Peace be still. Storm be still. Can you receive? Paul said concerning giving and receiving. Some, some people only know how to give. They're always giving. But they know very little about receiving. He said concerning giving and receiving. Giving and receiving must have equal opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to lay my hands on some people today. And I don't want you, when I lay my hands on you, I don't want you to pray. I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to receive the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And I believe today that God is going to break through. The Holy Ghost is going to break through in some people's lives. And you're going to receive. You're going to receive the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to lay my hands on you. And you're going to receive the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to, when I lay my hands on you, I believe that God's going to give you rest, supernatural peace. And you're going to leave here with the assurance that all is well. All is well. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So I'm going to pray for you. And there may be a couple of guys that would like to just go along behind you and in case the Holy Ghost wants to lay you down or put you to sleep, whatever it might be. But I'm going to pray for you. And it may be that I'm not to pray for everybody. You might not need the prayer. But if you need the prayer, you come because I'm ready. You can move my, my podium there. I didn't need it very long. If you need the prayer, I want you to come. And I'm going to pray for you. And well, I just want you to lift your hands, and I don't want you to pray. I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to receive in Jesus' name.